What's up, yeah? Some things you gotta speak about. So, um, as most of y'all know, I made my comeback, so to speak, um, at Born Legacy uh, 4, BL4, over the weekend. Um, it's really fun to be back. I miss the energy, miss seeing the battle live. Watched a lot uh, from my computer screen at the crib over the past year, you know, but um, it's good to be back. But being there kind of sparked some thoughts, you know. A lot of new faces have come into the battle rap scene, especially on Smack URL. The roster is pretty, pretty stacked at this point. Um, and a lot of new faces are kind of filling up, you know, the cards. You're not seeing as many old heads, so to speak, or more veterans, I'll say. You're just filling cards. It's a lot it's, it's a lot more filled with newer, you know, the younger PG class or the recent graduates. And I know some of y'all might say, yeah, that's because they're cheaper, it's more affordable, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, you got to give respect where it's due. Um, a lot of these young cats have been holding it down. And I just wondered what type of doors are open for them in terms of progression for the future. So I'm just trying to have an open discussion with y'all. I'm going to, you know, say my opinion on some things, but at the end of the day, I'm asking, I'm asking y'all a lot of questions, and I want y'all to, you know, leave y'all comments, spark some conversation, you know, maybe other uh, bloggers, media, personnel, whatever, whatever you want to title us as, journalists, whatever, battle rap journalists. Uh, maybe they might want to jump in and do some response blogs, something like that, or just start radio discussions. But, um, I wanted to know, you know, out of the newer PG class or just, you know, sophomores, the juniors, whatever, the seniors, the, 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 the newer faces, the, the new breed of battle rappers, who do you see having the greatest amount of potential to uh, reach that top tier status and beyond that, level beyond that, I like to call it the God tier. Low Deluxe, Godhead, Godhead, what you got, Godhead, the God tier status. Who do you think has that potential? Now, I personally imagine a lot of people would obviously say Chess, respectfully, because the boy is nice, we all know, he's putting in work, and his style and his confidence, he could just bang with anybody. I imagine a lot of people will say Av, some people I would imagine, a lot of people would say T-Top, I would imagine some would say Briz, you know. Um, there's a bunch of people that could make it to that superstar. I mean, a lot of them are already kind of like at that cliff. They're like pulling their head over the cliff to that superstar status. But at the end of the day, when it comes to widespread recognition, where it's just, yo, hands down, this dude is top tier, who could reach that level? And like I said, beyond that, who could reach the level of God tier? That's what I really want to know. And when I say God tier, I mean the likes of a loaded Lux. Uh, murder movie. Uh, Hollow to Don. Uh, you know, Hitman Holland is definitely God tier, you know what I mean? Regardless if he hasn't, you know, you had his first battle the other day, and like the first battle in two years, you know, the man's made it to a level of celebrity that honestly, even the likes of Lux and the rest of them haven't, haven't made it to, you feel me? Um, whether you think that he's a lyrical savage or not, Holla is God tier status right now. Um, who has the potential? And one other question I have for y'all is, is have the doors to that God tier status been closed already? Like, is the God tier notoriety only available to those who came from the battle rap genesis, you know what I'm saying? The on camera battle rap genesis. You know, the modern era of, you know, Smack DVD, Fight Club, uh, uh, Sub Zero, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you could throw it back, you know, on the West Coast on the grind time, uh, you know, stages and stuff like that. Like, oh, of course, and I'm, I'm naming a lot of Smack rappers, but you could definitely throw, you know, Disaster, you know, up in there. Even regardless if you think he fell off over the years or whatever the case. Disaster, you know, he's, he's up there. Um, whether you have top tier or god tier, he's at that elite tier, you know what I'm saying? Battle rap Illuminati. Um, and, other, and others, you know. But have the doors been officially closed? I, I wonder, you know. 
will any newcomer be given that type of recognition? And why do battle rap fans hold, you know, no disrespect, the likes of Lux, Mook, and the rest of them, who battle once every 57 moon cycles, and dudes battle, they, they battle as often as we have presidential elections. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, dudes who battle once in a deep blue sea, why do people hold them at a higher regard? And why are they able to demand such a higher level of pay? than, you know, the people who are actively keeping Battle Rap alive. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, mess up a, a, a man's check and say they don't deserve the bread that they demand. By all means, Loaded Lux, I've spoke to him numerous times back in my Vlad TV days, know your worth. Lux knows his worth and he demands his worth. The same with Murder Move, you know what I'm saying? Hollow is up there, but Hollow is more accessible. Hollow is also more, no disrespect, but like a battle of, battle of the people, in my opinion. Like, he's a dude that like, yo, like, I, I'm good with a 20,000. I'm good with a 15. I'm good with a 30 if you're gonna throw that. I'm good with a 40 if you're gonna throw that. But at the end of the day, I'm good with a hefty check and still putting in this work so that the people get to see, oh, my shit look crazy. So that the people get to see, you know, the battle that they want, you know what I'm saying? Hollow doesn't have to accept battles with certain people. I'm not gonna throw out names, I don't want people to think I'm doing throwing shots, but he does it for the people. Charlie Clips, in all honesty. If you wanna say that he's not God tier because he's just so active, all right, but Charlie Clips is at least demigod tier. He's not just top tier, he's at least demigod. That boy, you know, battled with the Giants, you know what I'm saying? He's been around for ages. Um, but Clips is more touchable because of the fact that Clips is always willing to give the younger crowd a chance. Um, but I just wonder, you know, why battlers who don't battle pretty much ever are held at a higher regard than the ones who are actively keeping battle rap alive. It's just an interesting, interesting topic to me. I know obviously they have to put in the work and they put in the work since before it was shit was even cool to be called a battle rapper. But in today's era, when there's so much competition, dudes battling 24-7, you know, and there's certain dudes that are shining, why don't they get more recognition? Of course, like I said, you gotta put in the time, gotta put in the effort, maybe it's too soon or whatever, but give it another three to five years, and they put in that work, three to five years, consistent. Dudes battling six, seven, eight times a year, 10 times a year. Will y'all actually open the door and say, all right, that's a top tier. Universal recognition. It's not like we have to debate about it. Nah, that's top tier. Nah, that's God tier right there. You know what I'm saying? Will the door open for them? We'll see. Something else that I was wondering is people always talk about resumes and battle rap, right? Oh, this person, who have you battled? Before you see me, you got to go through this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. I'm like, all right, that's true. You know, you can't just give a shot to someone who's battled only a PG stepper. But at the end of the day, a lot of dudes who are active now, we have more battle rappers now than ever before. That's a fact, because battle rap is the new cool thing in the street. So everyone sees, you know, uh, opportunity for a check. So everyone wants a piece of the pot, understandable. My question is, do people who came from that Genesis era, do some of them really have a more extensive, when you break down resumes, a more extensive resume than battlers who are battling active today? And I'm taking, I'm, I'm talking, taking all bets. They not backing out from nobody. They, whoever you put against them, they scrap it. Do you really think that the ones who are God tier or even some of the top tiers have more extensive resumes than a lot of guys who people consider mid-tier or low-tier, you know what I'm saying? Some people argue most definitely yes. Some people who are in those mid-tiers or mid to high-tier will be like, nah, bro, if you really break down who I've battled, I'll put in the work, you know? Just the fans and the leagues and the already preordained top-tiers and god-tiers will give me a shot. Something that I wanna know is what do guys like Danny Myers, active, puts forth, you know, quality performances all the time. Guys like DNA, who, yeah, he had his period where a lot of people were 
tired of hearing him because he over he did oversaturate himself. You know, you can still argue that he still does if you want, but he reasserted himself, re-identified himself because he clearly you can see it clear as day visually. He switched up his battle rap style. He doesn't spit like the old DNA did, where you kind of would get tired of hearing him spit the same style. Four bars punch, four bars punch, whatever, you know what I'm saying? He's reasserted himself and DNA's been hot. He's been on fire for a long time now. What do guys like Real Deal, you know, have to do? Real Deal's been around since the old grind times, battle mad people. He's got an extensive resume, you know what I'm saying? He's one of the only non-traditional, say it like that, non-traditional smack rappers to hold his weight on smack. And every time he battles on smack, he has nothing but love from the fans. What do guys like that have to be, have to do in order to be considered under that legend status, under that God tier, top tier, God tier status, you know? I bet bread if you ask people, how do you see real deal, you know? A lot of people are like, oh, he's a vet, he's a vet. Why is he just a vet? Why isn't he at a higher regard? You feel what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense to me in a lot of ways. What do some people have to do? What do they have to do? What type, what, what more could they do to get acknowledgement as that upper echelon? DNA, I've spoken to him on a number of occasions over the years, and he's, one battle he's been trying to get is Mook. You know, he battled Rex, he's battled Shine, you know, he's battled Surf back when Surf was all about hands on his hips. He cooked Surf, you know what I'm saying? DNA's been putting in that work, man. He's giving the newcomers a shot. He's been sunning newcomers when he gives them a shot. You know what I'm saying? He's had his hiccups here and there, you know? But at the end of the day, what does a dude like DNA have to do to lock down a battle with the likes of a murder move? Why doesn't he deserve that battle? You know what I'm saying? I'm just having an open discussion. I'm just asking y'all questions. Get your views on some of these things. Because I think these are the topics that people need to actually look at and try to address. Let's look at a guy like Charlie Clips for a second. Charlie Clips, salute to the brother, been putting in work for years. One of the greatest freestylers in battle rap. We all know this. Um, but Charlie Clips has been one of the top god tier, demigod, whatever you want to call them, tier battlers who has time and again falling under scrutiny by the fans because he's giving half-hearted performances only come with two rounds, not three. And yet Charlie Clips, a person who's criticized all the time, who check YouTube comments, that boy be getting hatred from the Lord. He gets hated on, oh, he's falling off, he's not hot no more, blah, blah, blah. He's getting criticized for 10 battles straight. Then boom, he lands a battle with Loaded Lux, where Eclipse is getting paid X amount of dollars. I don't know how much he got paid, but he's getting paid fat bread. And he rises to the occasion, and he arguably beats Lux. But in a lot of people's eyes, you could say that the bar type of bars and stuff that Eclipse did versus Lux, he's done versus other lesser opponents. It's just because maybe that it's a lesser opponent, people don't hold the bars at a higher regard, so their reaction to them might just be like, he's spitting that versus this dude that's trash because of the, the opponent is quote unquote a lesser opponent. But he spits that same material towards a, another fellow God tier rapper, and people just want to be, oh my god, I can't believe he's that's the craziest of clips on his game. Like, he's been on his game. But if y'all want to criticize him so much, give him battles on battles of criticism, and then still give him a shot to fight to fight with Lux. And then right after the Lux, he's battling some more, and y'all go right back to criticizing him. Why can't a lesser opponent, quote unquote, a lesser battler who doesn't get criticized, who puts in nonstop work after work after work, it's nothing but love, yo, he's the truth, he's fire, he's the future, blah, 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 he's, he's, the, he's, he's the greatest, he's the future, blah, 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 oh, I said it already, but you know what I'm saying? Just gets nothing but praise from battle after battle, why can't they lock down a match with the likes of a Lux, with a Hollow, with a, with a Clips, with a Rip, with a Surf, with a Rock, even though Rock, Rock is totally top tier, borderline god if he's not, you know, at least, at least before Sharon. Now after Sharon, like I said, look in the comments, people flaming his life, but, you know, Rock, he'll, he'll give more people shots, but why can't they get shots with the likes of, like I said, you know, a Mook, a Lux, a Hollow. Why not? The other thing I was thinking about is gotta actually let some real punches off for a second. Um, 
Do you think that the lower tier or the newer PG uh, class battle rappers will ever reach the, the position where they they are able to demand 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 a battle? You know, do you think they'll ever be at that level where they can demand that type of bread um, from leagues like Smack KOTD, Snoop Dogg wants to host an event, whatever the case, or, let me, just, let me phrase this right, do you think that in some odd way, those battlers who are newer trying to come up, let's say give it a couple years in, and they're solidified, their name, you know, is a, is a marketable name, um, in battle rap, do you think that because they battle frequently, consistently over the course of years, they're holding themselves back from future enormous paychecks because they're just a commonly seen face? Do you think that battling often over time will make people just get used to seeing them to the point where leagues will refuse to pay them a big, a big budget because they're like, yo, we've had you battle for us 20 times and we're paying you 6,000 and the people pack the house. I don't need to pay you this 40, 50,000. Like, you can continue to hold these, these, these smaller checks because you're just a frequent battler. You're a person that people always see. You're not like a special entity that only comes out once every blue. Do you think that in order to get those big checks, you have to fall back and make people want to see you? But again, do you think that if, unless, like, let's say, unless you get locked up, if you're a newer battler, even if you're a couple years in, do you think that if you fall back, people would want to see you to the point where the leagues would be willing to pay you 30, 40,000? I just don't know if they'll ever actually reach that state, you know, of financial gains. I want to know what y'all think. Do you also think that battlers who are new and they build their profile having, you know, a hot battle on Smack, they come up, they get to come up, whatever, the PGs. Do you think that it's wise for them then to be like, you know what, to hell with Smack URL? I want to go battle the other leagues when Smack and them clearly say, yo, if you battle the other leagues, we're not going to help build your profile no more. You're not going to battle on our platform. They go and battle on Cato CD, Don't Fly, or whatever else. And they might get their views, might get their battle, their small, quick paychecks, but their notoriety only reaches a certain ceiling. Do you think it's wise for them to not be confined to Smack and go to other leagues to try to build their profile? Or do you think that they should stick with Smack because that's where most people watch battles? That, that clearly gets the most views out of every battle league around. I mean, for certain things, like Daylight used to say like, yo, don't be stupid and confine yourself to one league. If you're a person from the hood who never got to see the world, you get booked, or you get an offer to be booked at a battle event in, in Canada, in Japan, in, Europe and Africa and whatever, you know what I'm saying? Do you think that people should take those opportunities to go and travel and see the world, but risk not having as big of a future in the broad scheme of things in terms of their career with battle rap because they're not on smack? You think it's worth it? You think it's worth it to confine yourself? Um, we all know Daylight did that. Do you think that was a smart move on his part to just tell no one and everyone is smack to kick rocks and not show up. Do you think that, more specifically, a dude like Jonai, he got his, he had his, you know, couple battles before that where people was watching him, you know, whatever, but it was small, small views. And then he, uh, he went, had his battle versus Gutta, PGs. I was there personally for that. And I remember I was like, this kid, he was nasty. Like, I was like, I was mind blown. And Norbs really had put a lot of faith into him. He wanted to build him up, but Joe and I then went two seconds later. Um, I don't remember if he, I think he battled Newborn first, I think. And then he went, boom, and just battled Disaster on KOTD. Smacking him, cut the tie. He hasn't seen no smack since. He's battled, you know, on KOTD and he's battled on Don't Flop. But do you think that that decision hurt his career? Which is the better move, to stay in smack or go abroad? Your thoughts. Which battlers um, do you think could hang on Smack? And which would you like to see have an appearance on a Smack URL stage? I don't care what their race is, white, black, Spanish, blah, 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 Asian, whatever. I don't care what their sexual preference is. I don't care what their gender is. Which battlers that is not, that are not on uh, Smack URL at this point, do you think 
can hang on smack and she can give it a shot on smack. That's pretty much all for now. Now it's your turn to talk. I asked the questions. I gave some opinions. Now it's your turn. I want to hear what y'all got to say. So comment below. Let's have an open discussion. Let's see what y'all think. It's time for me to actually put in this work. I've been half-assing right now. Ah! It's just, it's just...